Hey, physics students. Here is a video that has some notes in chapter 10, in particular, about work and energy. Where do you know about these things? But uh, we're going to talk about them now with rotation. So um, we know that if we have our translational variables and our rotational variables, we have the analogs of these. So we know that, for example, translationally we would call, talk about a displacement, and rotationally we talk about a, an angular displacement. Here we have velocity, here we have angular velocity, acceleration, angular acceleration. Here we have force, and over here we have torque. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? Here we have mass. Here we have rotational inertia. Um, I think that's the lot of them. So remember, that work is defined as the integral of force as a function of distance dx from some position to some other position. And uh, here, that's equal to average force times displacement. Uh, which is just equal to force times distance if the force is constant. So, you can go back and look at your notes. You could do, we could do the exact same things now with the rotational variables, but I'm just going to drop them in in their places. So, uh, work is still work. It's just the rotational version of work. It's still something that's measured in joules. Uh, if we're in a rotational context, then we could say that work is equal to, instead of x1 to x2, we have theta1 to theta2, of torque instead of force as a function of theta instead of x, which would be d theta. And if uh, we want to talk about average or constant, then we have the average torque times that angular displacement which is just equal to torque times that angle if the torque is constant. So everything works just like uh, we would like it to. We don't really need to, we just need to know the analogs. We don't need to learn anything new here. Um, power is equal to uh, work divided by time, that's average power, and that's still true. You can just still find work in a different way here. Um, or, remember, the instantaneous power was equal to force times velocity. So here, if we wanted to find this rotationally, that would be torque times angular velocity. Right? We're just dropping in all of the analogs of these things. Force turns into torque. Velocity turns into angular velocity. Um, and the only other thing that you need to know here is that uh, when you're using gravitational potential energy, for objects that rotate, UG is still equal to MGH, but the H is the location or the change in height. We measure that relative to the location of the center of mass of the object. That's very important to understand. And uh, I'll do one quick example for you.
that's kind of similar to some of the examples we're going to see in the homework. So let's say we have an axis here, and we have a rod of length L. Uniform density, so the center of mass is right in the middle. And we're going to let it go from here, from rest, and let it swing down all the way to here, assuming that there's no friction. So it will swing down all the way through here. And let's say uh, it has mass. M, and uh, I don't think I need to tell you anything else. I think we just need to know an expression for the length of it and the mass M. So um, in terms of M, L, and any fundamental constants, In this case, what do you think the fundamental constant would be that we're going to need to use? That just means like other things that we have representations for, uh, non-numeric representations for. And that, in this case, it's going to be the g, the acceleration due to gravity. So in terms of m, l, and fundamental constants, we want to find the maximum angular velocity and the maximum angular velocity is going to happen at the very bottom here. So um, this is just an energy problem. There's no friction. So the total mechanical energy, the change in that is zero, which means that here, before it's moving, it's all gravitational potential energy. And then here at the bottom, it's all kinetic energy. And I'm just going to put a little r there to remind us that it is rotational kinetic energy. So that's mgh is equal to 1 half i omega squared. And I'm going to call this omega max. That's the omega when it's at the very bottom there. Um, this isn't a hard problem to do. We've done things like this before, but we just need to be very careful about what this h is. This is the h, the height of the center of mass. So here, the center of mass is going to go from here to here. It's not dropping the entire distance l. It's not dropping that far. The center of mass is only dropping by l over 2. The height of it right now, there, and then at the bottom, at the lowest part of the swing, the height's there. So this h, uh, the delta h of the center of mass, is equal to L over 2. So m g is L over 2 is equal to 1 half. The rotational inertia of a rod about its end is 1 third m L squared times omega max squared. So Simplifying this, my m's cancel out. One of the l's cancels out with one of those l's. And it looks like I have, uh, moving everything to this side, I've got 6, nope, sorry, the 1 halves cancel out. 3 g over l. sure that that's right. Is equal to omega max. Uh, and I square rooted that. So there you go. That's what it would be. And um, you could check to see just real quick if this is dimensionally consistent. This would be measured, of course, the acceleration due to gravity is meters per second squared. The length would be measured in meters. So this is just um, like nothing over seconds squared. When you take the square root of that, it's like nothing over seconds. 
and uh, omega is in radians per second, but remember radians are like ghost units. There aren't really any units there at all for radians, so we should be getting units of per second here uh, with nothing on the top. So that's how you do problems like that. It's uh, the conservation of energy principle, very same. Um, just be careful with your H. And uh, question, could you have used torque here to do this problem? Think about that for a minute. Um, could you have used torque and then uh, found the angular acceleration and just done the angular version of the kinematics equations? And um, the answer is no, you could not. So I'll, maybe you can just take a minute to think about why, and we'll talk about that in class. And that is the end of this video. Hi. Hi, Maeve. Hi. How are you? Good. What do you think about this physics video? Um, I don't really understand it. Oh, you will someday. Don't worry.